Good morning and welcome to another Pilates class with me. Um, today is a little bit more of a challenging class. We're going to work a lot on our um, glutes and lower body um, and some more advanced, I suppose, abdominal exercises. Of course, I'll always give you um, an option um, to regress if you want it or if you feel like you need it that day. Um, but yeah, see how you go and see if you can keep up. So we're going to start on our hands and knees in a four point kneeling position. Hands directly under the shoulders and knees directly under the hips. From here, we're going to round our spine, looking between the legs, tucking the tailbone in as firmly as you can. And then start at the tailbone as you dip your belly towards the floor and look forwards. Start at the tailbone as you tuck under, rounding the spine, actively pulling that pubic bone in towards the belly button. And then again, start at the tailbone as you sink your belly towards the floor, looking forwards. Let's go one more time. Tailbone leads the way, round the spine, really press through the palms, lift your stomach up away from the floor and then sink back down, arching the lower back and trying to get some extension through your upper spine as well. Come back to neutral and then let's just rotate. So we're gonna slide that right hand underneath the left arm, bending into the left elbow, bring your right shoulder to the floor if you can. Come back through, place the right hand down, reach the left hand underneath and let the left shoulder rest on the floor if you can. Back through the middle, let's come over to the right again. Sink through and let's hold. Take a big breath in, feel your ribs, really let that air sink deep into your rib cage, to the base of your lungs. Come out of that stretch and then swap sides. Sink through, let the shoulder rest on the floor. Take a big breath in, feeling deep into those lungs and out. Come back to the middle. Moving on to our hips, let's step the right foot forward, let it rest flat on the floor, and then come up into your kneeling position. Here we'll place the hands behind the head, lift up tall through your chest, look straight ahead, tuck the pelvis under, and then sink forward just a little, but don't be tempted to sink too far into your lower back. So we want to stay quite upright here and get the stretch by pulling the pelvis under. And then from there, we're going to tip that right elbow towards the floor and tip the left elbow towards the ceiling and feel a deeper opening through that left side. Come back through the middle, rotate to the right, let your spine twist, feel that rotation there. Think of putting, pointing your right elbow back behind you as far as you can. Come back through the middle, tip the right elbow to the floor, left elbow to the ceiling. Come back up tall and then turn to the right. Stay really grounded through that right foot. It'll help keep you balanced. Back to the middle, tip across to the right, and then this time reach your left hand to the ceiling and slightly over to that right hand side, feeling even more of a stretch. Think of squeezing through your left glute here to keep your pelvis tucked so that you don't just arch your back. Come back through, up through the middle, turn to the right, hold here for a moment and then reach both arms out wide. Think of really pulling that right shoulder blade back to emphasize that twist through your spine. Hold for a moment, big breath in and out. Hands come back behind the head. Turn back to face the front. Let's place the hands on the floor, just the fingertips and then stretch back. Feel a little bit of a lengthening down the back of that right leg. And we'll go back and forth here. Try not to shift your weight over that left side. So as you sink back, see if you can stay um, square and even through your weight there rather than tipping your hips over to the left. One more time, sink back, toes lift to the ceiling and then come forward again. Let's swap legs, right knee goes back, left foot comes forward. Make sure your feet, your foot and your knee are about hip width apart and then let's come up tall, hands go behind the head. Lifting up tall through the chest, tucking the pelvis under, squeezing the right buttock area. Let's tip the left elbow to the floor and reach the right elbow to the ceiling. Pause for a moment, enjoy that stretch. Come back to the middle and now turn your body to the left. As you turn to the left, try not to let your hips follow. Try and stay square through the pelvis. Point that left elbow back behind you as much as you can. Come back through the middle. You tip left elbow to floor, right elbow to ceiling. 
back through the center and then twist to the left. Get that rotation, pull that left elbow back. Try and stay connected here between your ribs and your hips so you're not letting anything go. Back through the center, let's tip to the left and this time reach your right hand to the ceiling. Feel a, a real deep stretch through that right side. Hold for a breath in and out. Come back to the center, turn left. And now open both arms wide, pressing that left hand back behind you, but try not to twist through the hips. So stay square and stay grounded through your left heel. Big breath in here. And out, hands come back behind the head, turn to face the front. Fingertips to the floor, and then let's sink back, feeling that left hamstring stretch. Back and forth, just move quite fluidly here. Um, let your toes lift as you stretch back and then plant them back down as you come forward and again back and forth one more time. Good, come back onto both of your knees and plant your hands on the floor again. Go your toes under now and then we're going to keep the knees bent. We're going to lift our knees off the floor and push back into a bit of a half downward dog. So press your chest back towards your um, knees there and hold here for a moment. Slowly straighten into your legs, try not to move your chest and then sink back down again. So if you keep your chest nice and still, you'll feel your hips kind of lift up towards the ceiling as the knees straighten rather than your weight shifting forwards over your hands. Let's go one more time, bend and straighten and hold here, pedal out through your legs, pushing one heel at a time down towards the floor as you keep your chest open towards your knees. Good, come onto both of your toes, bend the knees again, and then we're gonna press forward into a plank. Hold a moment, think of pulling belly button to spine, and then press back, bend the knees, sink the chest towards the thighs. Come forwards, find that plank, lift your chest away from the floor, gaze is straight down at the ground, and then sink your chest back towards your thighs. Let's go through another three of these, press forwards and then sink back. Two, good, and back. And one more time, press forwards, hold for a moment, make sure everything's nice and switched on, belly to spine, shoulders are strong, and then press back towards your thighs and then walk your feet forward towards your hands. Press down through those heels, roll yourself all the way up to standing, roll the shoulders backwards, and then we're going to roll all the way back down, toe, fingertips come towards the toes, bend into your knees and come all the way down to sitting. Okay, so we should be warmed up now, everything's moving, um, let's move into our strengthening lips, so lie down on your back. We're starting with a bridging sequence. Um, our bridges today are going to be a little bit wider than hip width. So bend your knees and find your heels with your fingertips and then walk your feet out just a little bit wider than your hands. From here, let's tuck the pelvis under, feel your lower back flatten against the floor and really emphasize that scoop and then start to press your hips all the way up to the ceiling. When you get to the top of your bridge, I want you to take a moment to put your hands on your ribs and almost push them down. Push them down so that your stomach muscles are switched on as well. So you should feel stomach muscles working through the front to pull the ribs and hips together and buttock muscles working at the back to push the hips towards the ceiling. Now that we're here, let's do some knee opens. So we're gonna keep the hips where they are, open the knees out and in. As you open the knees, I want you to feel your glutes squeeze a little harder. It's pretty tempting to let the hips drop as the knees open. So I want you actively squeezing your hips upwards. Let's do another five here, and then we'll go into some pulses. As you're keeping your hips raised, let's try and keep the back of the neck long and the neck and shoulders relaxed. One more time, open back to parallel and now lower the hips halfway down. Squeeze them all the way up. Inhale on the way down. Exhale on the way up, inhale, exhale, lift. So as the hips drop down, you'll feel like your tailbone untucks a little bit. And then as your hips lift back up, you should feel that tailbone retuck. 
looks like you kind of let it go and then you bring it back in. Let's go for three. Good, two, well done. One more, lift and hold, hold here. Bring your hands to the ceiling now. Make sure your shoulder blades are still resting flat on the floor and your collarbones are broad. So now that your hands are raised, it doesn't mean that your shoulders are lifting forward. We're gonna do one leg at a time and open the opposite arm to the side. So open your left knee and your right arm and then come back to the middle and then swap right knee, left arm. Now this is about control. So as your left knee opens, try not to let the right knee follow. Try and work on keeping everything really centered as you alternate here. You kind of feel like you wanna move both. Um, so there's a little bit of control involved in the one that's staying still. You might have to ground yourself a little bit more firmly through that hip area and then tighten up a little more through the stomach muscles. Just take another moment to check back of the neck is long. Collarbones are broad. You should feel your shoulder blades resting on the floor underneath you. Let's go for three, two, one more. And then we'll hold our bridge. Holding here, yeah, tuck the hips up a little higher, lower the hands back over the head, and then straight back up to the ceiling again. As your arms go overhead, I'd like you to feel like you maintain some distance between your ears and your shoulders. So the arms go overhead, but the shoulders don't shrug. They just stay nice and heavy on the floor. Keep those hips raised, and we're starting to drop. And let's go for three. Good, two more here and we'll keep the arms above the head after that last one. One more time, arms go overhead, leave them there. Leave the hands there, lift the hips up, make sure they're nice and square and then we're going to roll our spines down as slowly as we can and really move bone by bone. Let's go back of the ribs, lower back and final piece of the spine is the tailbone. If you got that happening, well done. That can be really hard. So let's bring our hands back down by our sides now and we'll move on to our abdominals. We're going to bring our feet back to hip width apart and then we'll just find our neutral spine position. So there's a little bit of space under your lower back, really only enough to fit a blueberry and you should feel like after your shoulder blades, the next heavy part of your spine is your tailbone. The rest is, is light or, or gap. From here, let's switch on our pelvic floor. Engage those lower abdominals. Feel a little firmness in that lower part of your stomach and pelvis area. Bring your right leg to tabletop and then your left. We're gonna place our fingertips on the outside of our shins. And then when you're ready, curl forward. So breathe out, sink the ribs down, exhale as you lift your head, neck and shoulder blades and then breathe in to lie back down. Nice simple movement to start with. Make sure this movement starts with your ribs. So on the exhale, let your ribs slide down in towards your stomach. And then that should start the curving of your spine forward. And then you can just let your head, neck and shoulders follow. So the ribs sink down, that starts the curve of your spine. And then the rest just follows. Minimal effort in your neck if possible. That can be pretty hard to master. So if you're getting a sore neck at any point in this sequence, just pop one hand behind your head like this. Or as we move forward, you'll be able to just leave your head resting on the ground and not do the chest lift if you prefer. Let's go one more time, kill forwards and hold it at the top. We're going to be extending the same arm and leg. So lie down, reach your left leg out long, lower your left hand behind your head. Keep the right hand on your right leg. And then let's just back up, kill forwards, back to where we started, and swap. Lower the left, uh, sorry, the right arm and the right leg. And then bring them back in and kill forwards. Let's inhale as we stretch. And exhale as we curl, sliding those ribs down. Inhale, stretch long. Good. And exhale, curl forwards, sliding those fingertips along the outside of your leg. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, lift. So as you can see, if you really um, don't feel comfortable with these chest lifts, you could just do an alternating arm and leg extension. You're still gonna feel that anterior chain work. 
um, it'll just save your neck a little bit if you're a bit sore there. Now, as you're lifting, you should feel that you've still got that little gap under your lower back. So if we picture that the blueberry is sitting under there, you shouldn't have squashed it. We don't need to pull our pelvis in as well. We're lifting from the ribs, but the lower back and pelvis is staying neutral. Let's go up one more time and hold. Hold here, we're moving on to some obliques. So glue your knees together, glue your hands together, raise your hands back over your head, lying down. And now as we curl up, we're going to point the hands over the left, over the left of the thighs. Good. Lie back down, hands go to the middle. And then let's lift up and point our hands to the right side of the thighs. Lie down, arms go overhead. Exhale, arms go to the left. As you're lifting, you'll feel one shoulder lift a little higher than the other. So as we point to the right, You'll notice your left shoulder blade lifting more than your right shoulder. We want that to happen, but we want both to lift. So try not to let the lower shoulder just rest on the ground. See if you can feel both shoulder blades lift off the floor. Let's go to the right. And then we'll go one more time to the left, feeling your right rib come towards your left hip. Hold here and pulse. Reach those arms long. Squeeze right rib, left hip for another five. We've got quite slow pulses today. Four, three, two, one more. We'll lie down and then we'll continue alternating. Let's lift up to the right. Good. And then up to the left. This is not our final sequence, by the way. After we do our obliques, we've got one more abdominal set to go. Uh, and then we'll give them a break. Exhale on the lift, inhale on the lower. Well done. Keep those knees at 90 degrees. Take a moment to check you're not letting your, your feet sag down towards the floor. Should be able to rest your perhaps brekkie on your shins. Depends what time of day you're doing this. Last one to the left. And then let's lift up to the right. Hold it there and slow controlled pulsing for eight. Seven. Reach those fingers together. If you're starting to feel, you know, your right hand is a little further forward than your left, then it means you're not lifting up enough. I think we've got another four. Three. Keep your weight on your tailbone. Two. And one. Let's lie down. Hands go overhead. Okay. Last exercise. We're going to straighten our legs out from here. Now, as the knees bend, they're going wide. Create a little diamond shape between your legs and then curl up, put your hands between your legs. Straighten the legs out as we lie down. And then lift and bend through that diamond. Good. We're still inhaling on the lengthen part of the movement. Toes come apart there. Exhale on the lift and the toes come back together at that point. Heels stay connected at all times and the toes stay pointing outwards. Choose a height that you can control here as your legs extend. Don't go too low. If you're feeling your lower back arch or you feel like you're losing that control, point your legs a little higher. You can go straight up to the ceiling if you like. Whatever feels um, controlled to you. And let's go for four. And then lie down. And of course, we'll finish with pulses at the end of this set. Three. As your arms go overhead, see if you can remember the bridging action. Try not to let those shoulders shrug up to the ears. Two. One more. Last one. Let's curl forward. Hold it at the top. And we've got our eight pulses. Seven. Six. Five. My abs are on fire. I hope yours are too. Three. Two, one, and rest. Well done. Let's give those legs a twist from side to side. Loosen off the lower back. You might get a few clicks and cracks happening there. I don't mind what you do here, just something that feels good. And then we're rolling onto our left side. So moving on to our glute sequence. We'll start in side lying. We'll move, we'll move into an elbow prop, but we'll begin with our head resting on our upper arm, either with your hand out straight or bent. 
I like to bend mine. And then your legs will be bent to begin with. Pop your, pop your right hand on your hip. Push your hip away from your ribs. Create a big gap under your left waist there. Just take a moment to feel your lower back. Sometimes we can lie with our backs really arched. And then all we want to do is use our back muscles instead of our hip muscles. So push away. Slight tuck under the pelvis. Check that your lower back's really relaxed there. And then we're good to go. So let's stretch the right leg out long. It'll be at about hip level. And if you look down at your leg, it should be literally in line with your hip. We're going to start by tapping the floor with the toes and then lifting the leg up. When you tap the floor, just be really light. And then when you lift your leg up, feel with that right hand that the hip isn't shrinking in through the waist. So this movement is purely isolated below the hip joint. Like there's a little hinge point right there on the side of your hip. As your leg lifts, squeeze it up. You can actively squeeze it. Sometimes we expect these exercises to just work on their own, and eventually they do. But often at the start, we need to actually, you know, actively engage the muscle we're trying to target. And that can really help to get the movement patterns happening as they should, as opposed to as your body has allowed them to for whatever reason. Let's go three more here in this straight up and down plane. And then we'll lift and we'll go into a diagonal. So lift and hold here. Tap the floor in front of you, diagonal line, and then lift back up and back on that diagonal line. So we're starting to go across the body, slightly forward, slightly back. This is a little bit harder to steady. I want you to try and resist putting your hand on the ground and see if you can use your stomach to create that stability. As your leg taps forward, think of the front of your hip folding and that will really help to keep everything centered. If you let your hips sort of travel through, you start to feel your body twisting. The other little um, clue you can feel for is that that bottom leg is completely relaxed. So if your left leg is just resting on the floor and it's not trying to do anything, then you'll be working in a plane that you can control. If you feel like you're gripping the ground with your left foot, see if you can relax it. And if you can't, maybe choose a smaller degree of um, angle that you're working on. Let's lift up and hold. And now we're gonna tap behind us. Behind and then draw a big arc and tap in front. So now we're drawing semicircles. I called this a big happy rainbow to one of my clients this week. I'm not sure how happy she was while she was doing it. Let's tap forward and back. Should be starting to feel that right hip really burn on the side there. Let's go for five, four, three, two, and one. Rest your leg well done. Give it a little rub and then come up onto that left elbow. When you're on your elbow, you can put your palms flat against the ground or you can I sort of go sideways. Um, it helps me get my shoulder blade in position, but whatever's comfortable for you. We'll have our knees bent. Feet are a little bit behind you now and then lift your chest away from the floor. We'll go hand on hip again because it helps to keep everything square. And then let's start opening that right knee to the ceiling. As your knee opens, watch that your right hip doesn't twist back. So both hips, hip bones, I should say, are pointing straight forward. And that will dictate how high you can lift. You'll see I'm not going very high. I don't have very flexible hips. So that's as high as I can go. If I go any higher, I'll start to pull my pelvis with me. So you work with whatever height you can do. Let's go for another three here before we move to our level two plan. One more. Pop your knee down and then lift your feet into the air. That's our new starting position. It's a little harder to control. Make sure you're still pushing your chest away from the ground. Let's do another five here before we progress to our level three. Try and keep your heels together. Sometimes we want to put our toes together, but then you'll, you'll probably feel more hamstring activity than um, glute if you go toes. So let's try and anchor those heels together and you should feel that happening right there in the side of your butt. So let's lift the knee, hold it there, straighten the leg, bend it, lower it down. We've got five of these. We lift, straighten, bend, lower three to go before we 
of course, finish with some pulses. Two. That chest, one more. Good, bend the knee, keep the heels together, but don't lower it down, just pulse it. Five, four, three, two, one, rest. Bend your right knee, put your foot on the floor in front of your left leg, and then push your knee away through. You have a bit of a stretch there, let it open up, you can rock around, whatever you feel like you need. Well done. We'll now sit up for our side bend. So we're still on this same side. Put your left palm on the floor now. We've got our left foot resting on its side with the knee bent and then the right foot resting flat on the floor. That right knee is open and the left palm is on the ground, right hand is on the left knee. We will have a little test run to check that we're in the right position. Sometimes it takes a little bit of adjusting. So let's press through that right um, Foot, left palm, reach the right arm overhead, straighten your knees and find your side bend there. We're really lifting our waist right away from the ground and reaching that right arm overhead. Come down, rest the right hand back on the right knee. Um, move if you need to, otherwise let's go up again for a longer hold. So we're gonna lift and hold. And from here we're gonna do some little hip dips. Let's just dip down to a straight line and then up. Lifting through that left waist, we'll go for three, two, one more lift and hold. Good, and then sit back down. Well done. Our next side bend will be with a twist, and then we'll be twisting through to our front plank. So let's lift up, hold the side bend, square up through the hips, and now reach the right hand underneath the left arm. Look behind you, and then open back up to the front. Twist under, look behind, open back up to the front. Three more times, twist and back. Two more times, try and have a pause in the twist and then a pause in the plank. One more time, twist under, open back up, hold a moment. We're gonna pivot onto our toes, bring the right hand to the floor and then open the left hand out so that you're nice and square. Now we're in a plank. Make sure your hips aren't up too high or too low. Find a straight line. Tuck the pelvis in, use the stomach muscles. Let's bend the right knee, toes point to the ceiling. From here, we tap the right knee to the floor and lift. Tap and lift. We're trying to use the tummy here so that when we lift that leg, we don't arch our back. So it's a squeeze through the glute, sorry, not glute. Squeeze through the glute rather than an arch through your back. Let's go for three. Well done, two, one more, and then we get to downward dog. Let's put that foot down, cross your weight back, with your thighs, open the chest, and feel that stretch, pedal your legs out. Hopefully this downward dog feels a little looser than the first. Still a little tight. Let's enjoy that stretch. Well done. Good. Let's bend both of our knees, press forwards, back to the um, little presses we did at the start of class, bend and press, bend. When you go into your plank, really think about what you're doing. Try not to rush through it. Think shoulders, ribs, stomach, glutes, pelvic floor, everything. You're even squeezing your thighs to, to hold nice and straight. Let's press back one more time. And then walk your feet towards your hands. Once you get to the top, keep the knees bent or soft. Press through your heels, roll yourself all the way up. And get to the top, roll your shoulders. And let's come down onto our right side now to do our left glutes. All right, lie down, head on your right arm this time. Knees are bent, left hand goes onto the left hip. So we want to be square, like last time, both pelvis bones pointing straight forward in front of you, create that gap under your right waist by pushing your left hip away from you. Keep your right knee bent and stretch your left leg out long. You can get that sense of, of creating length through your left side as you reach it out. Let's tap the floor with the toes and then lift, tap and lift. Remember, there's going to be a limit to how high you can lift based on your flexibility. And if you go any higher, 
you'll see a bit of a sink of the waist. We want to keep this movement isolated to the hip and, and leave everything above it out of it. Tap. And if you can imagine there's a little puddle on the floor, you're just dipping your toes into and then lifting them back out of. And like on the right side, you might need to actually squeeze that body muscle to get this movement to come from the glutes. And that's okay. It's okay to encourage the right muscle activation patterns. Let's go one more time, lift and hold, and then we go onto our diagonals. So tap in front and then lift up behind you. So we're doing a combination of abduction and extension here. Tap down in front and then lift up. You should feel that your stomach muscles are working here to help keep you steady, help keep your hand off the floor. And let's go for another three of these, get that nice squeeze at that top point. Two more there, keep pushing the hip away from your ribs. Every now and then you kind of need to reset. You'll find you, you slowly kind of creep into the wrong position. One more time, lift up and then let's tap behind us. And draw a big circle over, a big happy rainbow. Tap behind and then tap in front. We'll do five more of these. Good, staying square. You might notice one side's not particularly stronger than the other. Um, that's pretty normal. Unless you've got pain, and then, and then we can perhaps attribute that to some weakness or some asymmetries that might have caused some overload in your muscles. One more time. And tap. Good. Bend your knees, rest them together. Give that hip a little rub. Coming onto your right elbow now. Lift your chest away from the floor. Create that nice length. Draw your shoulder blade back against your rib cage. Uh, feet are a little bit behind you, heels are glued together. Keep those heels tight as we open the left knee up and down this time. Good. So again, hips stay square. Your knee only goes as high as you can without feeling like you need to rotate your body backwards. Let's try and exhale as we lift the knee and inhale as we lower it. So nice and switched on through that underneath right waist, right lats, right shoulder, and a little bit through your core and pelvic floor. Three more here before we lift our feet up for our level two crown. Two and one. We lift the feet into the air. Heels stay together and we go up through that left knee. Good. Three more here before we add our Leg extension, two, one more, lift the knee, hold it there, straighten the knee, bend it, lower it down, four more, lift, straighten, bend, lower, lift, straighten, good, lift up through that right shoulder, last two, good, and one more, lift, straighten, bend the knee, but don't drop it down, let's pulse five, Four, three, two, one, and rest. Okay, bring that knee forward. Let's give it a stretch. It's definitely earned that. Give it a good stretch and then we move into our side bend. Good. So place that foot in front of the right foot. Come up right hand on the mat. You should be starting to get a bit of an idea of where you need just to set yourself up in your side bends. We've done these in a few classes now. Um, so really press your right palm into the floor, lift away from the ground, engage through your um, uh, right side waist, press through the shoulders, the right shoulder, press through the left foot and reach overhead, find that nice side bend. That's our practice one, come down, readjust if you need, set everything in position and let's go again overhead, hold for our dips, lower the hips down to a straight line and then lift them right up. We've got another four. Good. Three. Really feel that um, right rib and hip coming towards each other. Two. One. And rest. Good. 
See if you can, if you can land softly, that's another good, good sign that your side planks are getting stronger. Let's go again, lift up for our twist. Hold and then let's reach under with the left arm. Look behind you and then open back up to the front. Reach under and back up. Three more to go before we twist through into our front plank and do our left leg raises. Two. And one more time, twist under. Open back up. Hold a moment. Let's pivot onto our toes, bring the left hand to the floor and open the right hand out beside you. So palms are under shoulders, thighs are on, abs are on. Let's bend the left knee, point the toes at the ceiling. Tap the knee to the ground and lift. Tap and lift. Emphasize that rib to hip connection here so that the lift comes from your hip, not your back. Let's go for six. Strong shoulders, five, four, three, last two, and one. Step that foot back and press your chest towards your knees. Pedal out your legs. Well done, that's our third downward dog. Starting to loosen. And then let's bend both knees, press the chest towards your thighs, press forwards into that plank. Really strong plank now. Press back, bend the knees. Imagine like you're trying to touch your chest to your knees and then plank forwards. Press and plank. Two more times. Press, plank, and last one. Let's press it back, hold it here, and then walk your hands forward towards your, sorry, walk your feet forward towards your hands. Give the legs a little shake, roll yourself all the way up to standing. We're gonna come into some wide-legged squats now. So point your toes outwards, stand sideways on your mat. Now that angle of your feet needs to be the same angle of your thighs. Your knees need to point over the center of your feet. So if, if you come into your squat and you notice that your knees are angling sort of inwards over the arches of your feet, I would turn your feet in a little bit so that you're not compromising the knees. Let's put our hands on our hips to begin with. Roll the shoulders back, engage through the um, front of the stomach wall, squat down, bend the knees wide. Press up through the heels and tall. Let's inhale as we lower, exhale as we lift. It's quite easy to stay upright when you do a wide legged squat as opposed to needing to kind of bend forwards when we do our parallel squats. So let's try and work on that upright body. I'm going to raise the hands to the ceiling as we squat, really lift tall and then lower the arms back down as we stand. Raise the hands to the ceiling as you squat, press through the heels, squeeze your buttock muscles as you stand up. Let's go for another three. And I want you to really feel as though you're pushing the ground away. Press the ground away, push your body up. One more time, stay low, hold here. Lift your right heel, your left heel, press through the heel, stand tall. Lower down again, we've got two this time. Right, left, right, left, press through the heel, stand tall. And down for three this time. Good, two, shoulders away from ears. Arms reach into the ceiling, press through the heels, stand tall, well done. Sink it down, hold it low for four, three. Aim to keep your hips as level as you can, two, one more. Press through the heels, stand tall. We've got one more round, it's five for each side. I promise this is the last round, let's go five. See if you can stay low, four. Stay switched on through the tummy reaching the hands up to the ceiling, two, one, press through the heels, stand tall, keep your feet where they are, turn your left toes to the side and pivot onto your right toes. We're in a bit of a lunge position here, we're going to sweep our hands back behind us, tip forward over the left thigh, right leg is straight, shoulder blades are squeezing, elbows are straight, hold here, lift the left heel up and down, you've got eight. Seven, press through the big toe. Gaze is forward so that your neck is 
long and neutral. Three, two, put that heel down, sink into the left foot, press forwards, bring your right toes to the mat beside you. We're gonna step the right toes back and reach the arms forward and then lift. Tap back and then tap forward. Let's go for five. Really driving through the left heel here. Four, three, whoops, two, one more. Sink low, hold it here, lift the right foot up and down. Six, five, four, my balance is a bit off tonight. Three, two, one, put it down. Well done. Turn back to the front. We've got one wide-legged squat and then we'll twist to the right. Let's sink down and hold. Now we're lifting both heels for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, reach long, four, three, two, one. Press through your heels, stand tall. Turn the right toes to the front of the mat. Put it onto your left toes. Readjust everything, reach the hands back behind you. Sink over that right thigh, left leg is straight. Let's hold here. Lift the right heel for eight, seven. You can gaze in front of you, not down. Five, four, three. Stomach is on, right glutes are on. Press through the right heel, tap the left toes beside you. Let's reach forward as we tap back, down as we tap forward. Tap, tap. Really light through the left toes. They're barely touching the ground. It's right on the tip of your big toe and that's all you get. But it's enough. It helps to steady you. Let's go three, two, one more, reach long, lunge it back and let's lift that left leg up and down. Six, you should be getting that same squeeze through your left glute that we got in our planks before. Five, four, three, two, one foot down. Come to standing, well done. Let's bring those legs in to hip width apart for a roll down. My roll down with the twist, my absolute favorite exercise. I hope everyone else likes it because we get a lot of them in my classes. Let's bend the left knee, keep the right hand on the floor. Sorry, bend the right knee, keep the right hand on the floor. Left leg is straight. Turn your left hand to the ceiling, feel your left leg stretch. This is a moment to catch your breath. Let's reach the left hand down, bend the left knee, straighten the right leg, and reach your right hand to the ceiling. Right hand down, we'll do one more to each side. Straighten the left leg, reach the left arm to the ceiling. Back down, straighten the right leg, reach up. Back to the middle. Bend into both of your knees, roll yourself all the way up to standing, roll the shoulders, and down onto the floor now for a wide-legged stretch. So let your legs be open. Sit up tall, we've done this one once before. We're gonna run the right hand down the inside of the right leg towards the ankle as we reach the left arm overhead. You should be feeling this stretch in that left side. Hold here for a moment, twist towards the ceiling, and then twist your left hand towards your right hand and feel that rotation that's open up towards the ceiling and then down towards the floor. One more time, open up, twist down and now stay low, reach your left hand across to the inside of your left ankle, your right hand across to the left hand and then let's open up to the front here, to the ceiling, and then back to the left hand. Open to the ceiling. And then down to the left hand. One more time, open up. And then we're gonna make this movement a little bit more fluid. So let's go right hand to left hand. Right hand to right ankle. Left hand to right hand. Left hand to the ceiling. Left hand to right hand. Sweep it across, open it up. Draw big circles, imagine you're a ballerina. It's fun. 
and around. No one else needs to know what it looks like. And one more time to each side. Let's finish by moving across to the left ankle. Open up and then sit all the way tall. And we're just going to stretch out our hips. So we'll bring the right ankle onto the left thigh. I like to put my hands on the floor and then sort of scoop my bottom in closer to my heel to get the stretch where I want it and then rock side to side. Control the movement of your right leg with your left leg. Open the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades and then hold still where you feel the best stretch. If you lean your chest closer to your calf, you'll get an even deeper stretch. Hold here. Uncross that leg, bring the left foot onto the right thigh, scoot your bottom in a little bit wherever you need it, and then let's rock that left leg side to side. Open the chest, lift up tall. The taller you lift, the more you'll get this in your hip. If you sort of slouch down, you'll, you'll create too much openness. You want to lift up and kind of create a fold at the hip, and then let's hold that stretch. Lift the chest towards the calf, deepen the stretch a little bit and hold. Two bits, yeah. Let's uncross that leg, reach the legs out in front of you, raise your hands to the ceiling, big stretch, and then fold forwards and hold there, around the base of your feet or wherever you can hold. You can shake your legs here or you can just be still with your head resting down towards your knees. And then when you've had enough of that, we are all finished. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that class. There'll be another one up next week.